Big Steel's National Football Show. Please hit the like button. The Big Seals top 10 offensive lines. We're going to do that here in a second. And as usual, I go over to my Twitter page, at Dan Cilio Show, and I recommend you guys follow me there. And I only respond, by the way, to people that watch our show and who post on my show, Tone, James. These are my teammates, as some of you are. Cilio! Hurts is never getting better. You're such a hater. No, that's not what I said, jackass. Boy, I tell you, man, Philadelphia has every trait where every one of you could come to my family's holiday dinners and you would fit right in. I saw somebody say something. What's what's Cilio's tie-in to Philly? You know what the tie-in is? We're alike. That's my tie-in to you. It's not that I played next to Jerome. My tie-in is I'm like you. Okay? Whoever hollers the loudest, and I only listen to 5% of what I even say. (laughs) Okay? I only listen to 5% of what I say. Okay? Okay? Guy said he'd never be good. That's not what I said, dickhead. Yes, it is. I heard it. I know you heard it. Where are you coming up with? He played one year. Oh, well, he played one year. And what you've seen so far, Cilio, you wouldn't invest. Oh, hey. Holy maron to me. He not a buff on And the guy. You're getting my... You're getting my guinea up. All right, let's go have a damn beer. Come on, let's go to the... Let's go to the tailgate, okay? Don't start your shit with me. Hey, listen, man, we have different opinions of something, okay? Dude, get this. Berge, to me, he's your most complete linebacker. Then Seth took the mantle. Are you talking shit on Bill Berge? Talking shit on Bill Berge? No, I'm saying Seth's better. Remember when you laughed at us because we didn't want Tyler Van Dyke? Who's Tyler Van Dyke? <laughs> that was how little you thought of Hertz last year. Hey, hey Anton. Um, Yeah, okay. How little your own organization thought of him. That's why they stacked up two first-rounders. Are you under the impression, Anton, that Howie Roseman had a high opinion of Jalen last year too? I'm not. Howie Roseman didn't have a high opinion of him. So if you're saying I didn't have a high opinion, okay, me and Howie didn't either. Okay? Cut from the same cloth. (laughs) No one was sold, like Gail just said. Silly, but you guys make it seem like I'm the only guy that hated the guy. I, I didn't hate it. Hey, by the way, I don't hate anybody. I hate Nazis. Is it? I don't hate real, I don't. I don't hate anybody. Well, there's some people in the media that I'm not allowed to talk about anymore, but hey, let's not forget Russell Wilson was almost an eagle. See how fast things change, Sills? (laughs) I don't know, man. That might have been better for him if he would. Hey, Russell Wilson in the Eagle organization versus what's going on in Denver? I don't think Russell Wilson would have had a bad year. I don't, because you know why? The NFC sucked. He'd have probably been a star. Hey, maybe that's why Russell Wilson the last 10 years has been awful good, because really the NFC outside of Brady stepping in for the last couple of years in Tampa and what Stafford did, you had Kirk Cousins running the room and Aaron Rodgers, Mr. Underachiever. He vetoed it. (laughs) Yeah, you, you know what? Yo goes, he vetoed the deal to Philly. Yeah, he might want that back. Especially if he ends in a disaster in Denver. <laughs> hey, look at this. Think about how careers make a bad turn and a bad decision. Brady picked the Bucs because he had only two choices. The Chargers and the Bucs. 
But what did those two things have in common? They had rosters that were talented. The Chargers had shitty ownership. That's why I didn't pick the Spanos family. Spanos family ain't winning shit. Okay? The Glazers had won Super Bowls. Dungy is a friend of Tom Brady's. They got a great relationship, Dungy and the, and the Glazers. So he chose the management group and Jason Light. Okay? Um, hey, yeah, but the thing is, is that they had already moved to Los Angeles. And Brady would be the second wheel. Kind of like Aaron Rodgers is at MetLife. It's got to be the only time that Aaron Rodgers will walk into the building and he's playing on a team that's a renter. <laughs> yeah. he, you're, you're, hey, Aaron Rodgers goes from the Packers to the Jody McDowell Jets. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The three most famous people in Jet history, Joe Namath, Fireman Ed, and Jody McDonald. <laughs> 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 nobody's a jet fan dude <laughs> nobody's a jet fan yeah i don't mean to say that to you man but nobody's a jet fan nobody's a jet fan <laughs> uh right Dan, do you honestly see Brock Purdy or Sam Darnold taking the Niners back to the playoffs? I see Purdy more than I do Darnold. Okay. I see, I, I see, I see Purdy more. Dude, he played well for them. Now, again, I want to see him do it again. Niner guy, hey, you know what Niner guys are doing? And my but my boy Niner guy. Hey, did you see that video of your guy? Trey Lance, you see, you, you notice Niner guy's not talking today. You know why? That video I posted, holy shit. This guy's air mailing in a bag drill. <laughs> a bad. I'm like, holy shit. This guy sucks so bad. <laughs> he can't even hit a wide open coach. <laughs> Dude, that guy sucks terrible ones, man. Hey, if you walked, hey, hey, if, hey. Niner guy, if you walk that guy down Market Street, I don't think he'd have any takers, dude. <laughs> People forget Rams and Bucks didn't trade any picks to get their Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. Yeah, hey, the the Rams did. They traded picks to get to. Um, yeah, they traded. The Detroit's got a bunch of first round picks and couple picks for Stafford. Anton, they made some. They made some trades. That shitty ass drill develops bad habits. Oh yeah. Well, hey, it sure did. <laughs> hey, here, see, Niner, Niner wanted new material. So I said, you know, let me keep because because Niner has now motivated me to have new material for Niner guys. So I just happened to go on the internet and guess who's guess who's trending? One play tray. I'm like. Well, hopefully he's doing something good. The Niner guy can, you know, at, right at you, Sills. What do I do? I tune it on. This guy's air mailing passes in a in, 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 in a meaningless drill. Here, here's Trey Lance. Dude, when you throw a ball, Niner, you have to extend. You don't throw a ball like a shot put or like you got alligator arms. Here's Trey Lance. I was uh, uh, do I have anything to – I mean, you throw grenades like that. <laughs> you don't throw a football. You know, you got to sit back. You got to kind of like, you know, put your el put your legs into it. This guy's throwing grenades. Here's Trey Lance. <laughs> I was like, damn, dog. Got to extend it. <laughs> uh oh. I know that one hurt Sills, but damn. It wasn't that serious. Oh, no. <laughs> You're right, because he's a talent. He's a talent. Yeah, he's a big old talent. Hey, hey, hold on there, Junior. I don't think there's anything fat about that there, dog. 
There's nothing. 20, 25 inch pythons. Always remember that. What are you going to do when Big Sills Mania runs wild on you? All right. Yeah. I, hey, you know what, JM? You bring the worst out of me. I know something else, Flappy. How you done? <laughs> Trey Lance was supposed to be a second rounder. Second rounder? Yeah. Second rounder? Eric goes 25. Hey, Eric, I still hold strength records from 30 years ago in multiple places. I was one of the strongest people in the country. How you doing, baby? All right. I wrote down the 10, the big sills. Top 10 offensive lines in the National Football League. Here they are. D ball. What's that? Yeah. No, no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Number 10. The Cleveland Browns. AFC. Ben Powers, left guard. That kid McClinchy at right tackle. Hey, by the way, McClinchy is probably the best or second best right tackle in the NFL. I think the Browns got a pretty good offensive line. They're going to need that. And I love the fact that they're spending $46 million on Watson. $46 million on Watson. And they got the 10th best offensive line in the National Football League. They're going to need that. They got talent. They got talent in Cleveland. They just got to put it all together. A lot of pressure on that dude, man, Deshaun Watson, to win games. Because you get this. You get no latitude because of the creep. Hey, I'll say this one more time to you about Deshaun Watson. I'm going to be watching him. I'm interested in him. Um, I'm glad he got exonerated. At the end of the day, though, he's still creepy. I mean, when you sit all day long on, on like, Instagram, oh, my God. Uh, hey, let me let me do this. No, I, I, I wait a minute. Let me. I'm going to remind myself because I want to get through this list because this thing's really Instagram and wife. Yeah, <laughs> Instagram and wife. Remember, CTE. Just I put that. I remember it. Instagram wife Ben Simmons. Okay, trolling. <laughs> okay, I have to remember that after this. Okay. So I think the Browns have a pretty good offensive line. Number nine, 49ers. Trent Williams, center's pretty good. They got a damn good offensive line. They got a lot of great offensive weapons on that football team. But get this, I think that the 49er offensive line has actually stepped back, okay, a little bit. Number eight, the Chiefs. Um, that Humphrey kid's good. Creed Humphrey, the center, one of the better guys in the sport. And they, they're making a lot of investments, in my opinion, in the offensive line in Kansas City. They weren't going to pay Orlando Brown. Orlando Brown ended up moving on. And um, in my opinion, I think the Chiefs kind of are stepped back a little bit here, but they got a little cheaper there. Number seven, Packers. They got Bakhtiari there. They got Runyon there. It's a pretty good-looking offensive line. They're going to need it for a young quarterback in Jordan Love. Okay, personally, I think the Packers are going to finish in last place in the NFC North. But they got a good old line. They got a lot of talent on that football team. Okay? And the quarterback, Jordan Love, you go from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love. <laughs> Get, get this. There's guys up there saying he looks pretty good. We'll see. You know what? I can't think of a place in NFL history that had three consecutive quarterbacks that were going to be superstar players. This would be the first. You know, 49ers had Montana and Young. And, you know, the only other place I ever saw win with multiple quarterbacks was Washington 
with Joe Gibbs. So we'll see. I got the Lions at number six. Panay Sewell, Frank Ragnow, one of the better guys in the sport as well. I think the boy, the, the Lions are good everywhere. D line, O line. Jamison Williams comes back. They get a get him back in the wideout position. They drafted a running back. Linebackers, they got a new guy in the draft in the first round. They got CJ they added. I I, I would say the corners, you know. I'm, a, I'm a, a probably a little suspect at the cornerback position. But um, the Lions have a lot of good the, – the Lions have a lot of good pieces to their puzzle. And that offensive line – see, if you're going to be a successful team – and look at this. I think every one of these teams can make the playoffs. Browns, 49ers, Chiefs, Packers at seven. Well, not the Packers. Oh, we'll see, though. I may be wrong on love. Lions at six. I got the Cowboys at five. Um, Tyler Smith, Zach Martin. They got a pretty good old line. Okay. Uh, Tony Pollard looks like he's going to be ready for training camp. Um. I just don't know if they got enough in the backfield though to run the ball enough. They're they're wide receiving. Hey, you know what? When I when I when I look at Dallas's offensive unit, Tony Pollard, no tight end. Uh CD Lamb overhyped. Brandon Cooks, good player, not a great player. Um Gallup, I don't know, often injured. I mean, when I look at Dallas, I, I see talent, but I just worry always about overheight when you're talking Dallas. I got the Falcons at four. They could surprise, depending on what the quarterback does down there. Jake Matthews is a good left tackle. They're built, they're building some pieces there. I'll tell you what, I have never in my life seen a football organization get the shit kicked out of them after losing a Super Bowl like the Falcons did. Look look, look at the Falcons compared to the Eagles. That thing, Matt Ryan was an MVP guy when they went to the Super Bowl. That thing felt like it fell, it fell off the map. A complete and utter... Just destruction of an organization. Coach fired everything. Dan Quinn now in Dallas. That whole thing, it just, it disintegrated in one, in 12 months. Tom Brady snatched the soul. Hey, seriously, man, you want to know what the, the Grim Reaper looks like? Tom Brady was the Grim Reaper to the Falcon organization. Get this, the Falcons even recovered from the Michael Vick bullshit. I mean, after all that, they recovered. They have not recovered from Brady snatching your soul. I mean, that team fell like a lost lover. That thing was that thing was ridiculous how that thing fell apart. By the way, I want to remind myself also here, I'm writing this down. Will Wentz get another shot? Can he be in the same category as Ryan Tannehill? And um, Geno Smith. Geno Smith could do it. Why can't Wentz? So we'll talk on that here in a second. Here are your top three old lines. I got the Ravens at three. Ronnie Stanley, I love him. Fantastic left tackle. Has been a main. You know, that's one thing that Baltimore has gotten right ever since Jonathan Ogden, Bryant McKinney, all them dudes that they have had there. They have had great left tackles. They do a spectacular job at the safety position, and they do a great job at the left tackle position. Man, they evaluate that thing immensely well. I mean, they have had star old linemen in that organization. They can really, really evaluate that position. Great at it. Um.
I got the Browns, too. Actually, that was at 10, that was the Broncos. Ben Powers, excuse me, I wrote it down wrong. The Broncos have the 10th best O-line. Ben Powers, left guard, and McClinchy, who's now over in Denver, will help Russell Wilson. So Broncos are 10, not the Browns, because the Browns I have written down here, can't even read my own handwriting. Um, I got the Browns at number two. The Browns are the second best O-line for Deshaun Watson. Um, Jedrick Willis, Joe Bonanno, the guard who's an all-pro. They got some pieces in there, man. Browns are going to be a good football team. And, of course, the Eagles at number one. So here are the top ten offensive lines. Broncos at 10. 49ers 9. Chiefs 8. Packers 7. Lions 6, Cowboys 5, Falcons 4, Ravens 3, Browns 2, and the Eagles 1. How many NFC teams? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six of the 10 top 10 offensive lines are from the NFC, and they ain't got a quarterback but Hurts and a few other guys that are worth a shit in that conference. It shows you here. Who are the – hey, that's a great – wow. So six of the ten best offensive lines are in the NFC. How many of the highest paid quarterbacks are in the NFC in the top ten? Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, Stafford and Dak, Four of the – and get this. Dak's the 10th highest paid player tied with Stafford. He's got the fifth best offensive line. That's pretty good. Stafford is tied with him at 40. You know the Rams have the 18th worst offensive line in the NFL? He ain't going anywhere. Kyler Murray has the 25th worst O-line. He ain't going nowhere. Can't pay him. So the guy that really has the bet, there's only two guys that have a shot to win this year in the NFC. It's the Cowboys and the Eagles. Why? Quarterback. Now, and, and by the way, Hurts ain't going to start making that money till 24. The, the only guy in the NFC that matches up with a good old line and is being paid as Dak. That just shows you. You pay a guy if you have no offensive line. You're, you're right. You're walking backwards. These teams are – look, the Rams are walking backwards. You, why would you pay Stafford $40 million with a $2 old line? The Cowboys, Dak makes 40 and they have the fifth best old line. That's not going to hang around for much longer because he goes to $52 million next year. Because And they don't have him on a Jalen Hurts deal. So really, the only guy this year, there's two guys that have a shot to win the Super Bowl this year from the NFC, is the Eagles and the Cowboys. The rest of you have no shot from the NFC. Rodgers is now in the AFC. Kyler Murray is not playing until week eight. Just shows you. Oh, you have to have a quarterback in the AFC. And in the AFC, I'll tell you what, the Browns, second best old line, and you're paying your guy 46. They're totally going to make the playoffs. I'm now looking at this and lining this up, there is absolutely no way that the Browns are not going to make the playoffs. The Browns are going to make the playoffs. Second best O line, and you're paying your guy forty six million. He's sixth on the list. The Ravens, third best O line, number one of number one quarterback, and pay at fifty two million. Whew. Wow, are they going to make the playoffs? Falcons, they don't have a quarterback. Cowboys, the Lions. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think golf makes 38 million. So he's kind of around 40. 
if you want to sell a guy on taking a team friendly deal and his all line sucks, you sit him down, point, point to the old line and say, you want your ass protected or not? That's right. You look at Jalen Hurts and you go, well, how do we make this all work? Well, what do you want to do? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put you on a legitimate three-year deal. We're going to front-end the contract, give you the majority of your money up front to 172. And what we'll do is, if you're playing like you're going to play, like we think you're going to play, in your second year, you won't hit your third year. Don't worry about it. We'll restructure it, add extensions to it. That's what we'll do. And if it doesn't work out for Jalen and something goes sideways, injuries hit, whatever, Jalen Hurts is not 30 years old. And he could bail out of that deal himself after three years and get another contract somewhere else. See, he's in the draft. See, to me, I don't want long-term deals. I want short-term front-ended deals today if I'm a quarterback. Why? Well, how do I know the organization is going to keep putting the players around me to help make me win? Here's a prime example of it. Some of these teams are overpaying quarterbacks, and your old lines are some of the worst in the league. You're never going to win. Matthew Stafford has no chance of winning this year. He's got one of the worst offensive lines in the league. He's not winning. Can't protect him. Kyler Murray, one of the absolute worst old lines in the NFL. You're not protecting him, hence why he's hurt. <laughs> it's, it's pretty simple math here. That's why when Mahomes came out and said this, he came out, well, I guess, either yesterday or the day before. He goes, look, there's a fine balance. And he's talking like Jalen Hurts and Tom Brady. There's a part of you that has to invest in the process. See, Jalen invested in the process because the Eagles were kind to him and did the one thing organizations are. See, the Eagles have done something every other organization in the National Football League is afraid to do. You know what that is? Truly invest in their players. The Eagles are the only team in the NFL that invests in their players. The Cowboys don't even invest. They invest those bullshit contracts where the back end of the contract has all the money, hence why they get caught in cap hell because either they have to cut the player or they have to go to the player and, cut and tell them that you have to take a pay cut. And if you don't take the pay cut, we have to get rid of you. I mean, if they had done the whole Zeke Elliott thing right, he'd still be on the team. Him and him and Tony Pollard would be a nice combo, but they can't afford it. And they look bad in the process, so they had to cut them. That's not how you want to do business. You're trying to accumulate great players. You're not trying to systematically outbid yourself. And so the not even the Cowboys invest in their own players. The Eagles do that. The Eagles are the only team I've ever seen these restructuring of contracts with so many of them that they give the player actually what he's worth. They, they, they go to Jordan Mulatto. Can we do – we're going to restructure the contract. Here, here's some money here. Um, Darius Slay, hey, this is really a – Darius Slay signed a one-year contract. He will not be on the Eagles next year. And you know how you compromise that? Maybe he is. You sign him to a two-year deal, three-year deal. But what you do is you front-end it. Well, we got to take $5 million off the cap because we got to pay other guys. But here's $18 million or 20, whatever it was. Okay. You're not getting that anywhere else. So the player took the money up front, $5 million, $4 million, $3.5 million haircut. And in the end, he has more money in his bank account, more guaranteed money. Look at Lane. Lane's got a giant payday next year. That's paying your players. That's paying your players for years you haven't played yet. NFL owners don't do that. They're afraid to. That's why they always back end these contracts. Well, in the first year of your contract, you'll make this amount of money, that amount of money, that amount of money. That's why Patrick Mahomes' deal is outdated already. Because Lee Steinberg, as good of an agent as he is, it was outdated in two years. Because it's back ended. Now that Lee sees what Jalen Hurts did, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to front end his new contract. They're going to front end that contract, man. 
They're going to go like this. Here's $200 million up front on an extension to raise your thing to $52, $3, 4000000 million. And they're going to pay him up front. The Hunt family's good on that. By the way, I see the wife died of Lamar Hunt. What a maverick. I had a chance when I lived in Fort Worth, Texas, to meet Lamar Hunt, a big investor in uh, silver. Was also involved in the Magellan Fund. And I worked on Wall Street and I had a chance to meet him. He is was one of the absolute princes that I have ever seen in my entire life. What an absolutely great, great human being, Lamar Hunt. The brothers are fantastic, fantastic people. And here, real quick, uh, the story on how the Hunts came into the NFL. They were all, well, no, they weren't offered. The Cardinals, the, the um, St. Louis Cardinals, how did Lamar tell me? Lamar told me that they flew into, I think, Philadelphia, where Burt Bell was, who was the former commissioner before Pete Rozelle. And they flew in. It may have been Rozelle. I thought it was Burt Bell, though. Anyway, they flew in in the early 60s. I think it was Burt Bell now. And they made a bid to buy the St. Louis Cardinals. And the NFL rejected them. And on the plane flight home from Love Field, um, Lamar on a cocktail napkin came up with the concept of the AFL. And Ralph Wilson himself, do you, hey, I told you guys, some of, some of you guys, uh, some of you guys know the story because I think I've told some of you. Dude, the guy who owned the Chargers was Baron Hilton. And the reason that the Chargers were called the Chargers, because Hilton was the first um, hotel chain to have cards that you could charge your rooms on. They were like little credit cards. And so he named his team the Chargers. Baron Hilton named it off of a credit card that when you stayed at Hilton's, that's where the Chargers name came from, from Baron Hilton. <laughs> and so... Everyone was like, well, how did the Chargers get the Charger name? Um, there's not really a lot of lightning strikes in San Diego. <laughs> yeah. So Baron Hilton, because he, those NFL teams were nothing back, that, back then. They were nothing. So Baron Hilton um, put the name Chargers because of the charge card of the Hilton hotel chain. Yeah. The, um, uh, Dean Spanos told me that story. That's how they got their name um, from Baron Hilton. Crazy. But knowing and like Al Davis and those guys, you know, Al Davis was the managing general partner of the McGraths. Al really didn't put any money in. I think it was a $60,000 franchise fee that the McGrath pay, family paid for the Raiders in 1960. And they paid that in 60, like 20, no, it was 25,000 for franchise. Al told me this. And he became the coach. Then he went from, he was the former AFL coach of the year. Then he went from coach of the year to the commissioner of the AFL. And do you understand one of the reasons that the AFL and the NFL merged all the NFL owners said Al Davis is not going to be the commissioner of the National Football League. It's going to be Pete Rozelle. Those two guys used to bitch and fight over talent because there used to be a bidding war. Namath was supposed to go to the Cardinals, the St. Louis Cardinals. They had draft, they were going to draft him. The Jets, it was between the Jets and Cardinals that had his rights. And Sonny Warburn, the owner of the Jets, Titans. Paid name it like five hundred thousand dollars was the richest contract in professional sports, and Sonny was like, I think he was an agent at EMI, and so all the superstars used to go to the AFL games, but this all came around with Lamar Hunt. Lamar Hunt was the architect of all this, so it was Lamar Hunt that went to Al Davis and said, "Okay, we'll give you the Raiders. You'll be the managing general partner." and the majority owner of the Raiders. But you can't be commissioner. Al took it because it would be financially more 
being that then the commissioner of the NFL. So he went back to ownership instead of being the commissioner of the NFL. And now the Raiders in Vegas are worth $6 billion. I mean, so at the end of the day, Al was ahead of his time the whole time. Yeah. But this, again, all Lamar Hunt. All Lamar Hunt doing all that. Pretty crazy how the AFL, I'm a big AFL fan. I love that. I, I played probably in the third best non-NFL league. Um, I think it goes USFL, no, AFL, USFL, World League, then the old World League that like Zonka and them guys went to. I, I probably played in the third. It's like four great leagues. And now they got the upstarts. And now the XFL is probably fifth. That The top three were great. Um, I played in one of those leagues that were just, I mean, Scott Mitchell was our quarterback. We had great coaches too. Chan Gailey was in the, it was, it was a bunch of great coaches. CFL, none. Um, CFL is a great league. CFL is a great league. I'm talking the American football. CFL would probably, CFL is actually older, believe it or not, than the National Football League. All right, let me get over to this topic before we take a timeout. Can Carson Wentz be saved? Philly fans, football fans. He's been out of Philadelphia for some time now. Can he be saved? Nathan goes, no. Hey, by the way, Carson Wentz is a better football player than Geno Smith. Love the Australian League. Geno Smith is not a better player than Carson Wentz. He's not had a better career. That is not true. Not, it's not remotely close. By the way, Carson's probably had two better years than him. Not a better player. He has to first want to save himself. You can't throw a life raft to a porcupine. Interesting. Interesting. If he goes to New England. You guys must forget that Geno Smith got knocked out in the Jets locker room and no one defended him because he thought everyone thought he was a shitty clubhouse leader. You guys, you guys remember that? He got knocked out by a special teams guy. And no one, not one offensive line got up and protected him. If anybody got up and raised a hand to Jalen Hurts, you'd first have to deal with that monster on the left tackle position, Jordan Mulata. Every time someone gets a little frosty with Jalen, Jordan Mulata is right there. Okay? Sills, how do you think Wentz will do with the Eagles now? Would do with the Eagles now? I See, Wentz is overrated. You weren't saying that then. Past and present, Geno's better today. Geno's had one year in his life. One. Here. Geno Smith? Really? Geno Smith stats. I guarantee he's older, too. Guarantee he's older than Wentz. So here's Geno's stats. First two years he played, 3,000 yards, 21 interceptions, 12 touchdowns, 3,046. Completion percentage of 55. Second year was 3-10, 59.7, 2,500 yards, 13 touchdowns, 13 picks. Then from 2015, one game, 16, two games, 17, three games, 18, five games. 
didn't play in 19. 20, one game. 21, four games. This last year, I played all 17. His best year in his career was one year. 69.8 percentage completion, 4282, 30 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. It's a heck of a year. Now let's take a look at Carson Wentz's career. Carson Wentz stats. How old is Wentz? Wentz is 30. First year starting, 62-4, 37-82, 16 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Second year, 60.2, 32 33 touchdowns, seven picks. It's a better career already than Geno Smith. Third year, 3,074, 21 touchdowns, seven picks. 70% completion percentage. He's already a better player. 2019, 4,000 yards. Only quarterback in Eagle history to ever do that. 27 touchdowns, seven picks. Now he's doubling them, and now he's lapping them. Indianapolis, 21, 35, 63, 27 touchdowns, seven picks, 62.4 completion percentage. Last year, 11 touchdowns, 17.55. He was benched, 62.3. It ain't close. Wentz is a superior player to Geno Smith. Superior player to Geno Smith. Superior. Superior. Lapped him four times. Four times. Let's see. Gino got better coaching, better organization. Okay. Gino has a decent year, but he isn't sniffing once. It's not close. He's lapped him five times. But why isn't anyone knocking on Wentz's door? I know Wentz fell off, but let's not be disrespectful. Gino has one year and he's God now. I know, that's the point here. Yeah, but you also have to apply that to Hurts. It's hanging in there. He's trending and younger. All that, yes. It's a different. It's 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 a different dude tone. I got it. No, no, no. It's it's a, it's different. It's different. It is. He's older. I get it, but I think it has a lot to do with coaching. And by the way, tone goes. He has one good year, and now we're calling him God. I apply that to Hertz. He's like, I uh, <laughs> technically. <laughs> Technically, <laughs> yeah. oh man! Hey, you know, you know, Tone. I'm gonna hold that technically thing to you. Technically, <laughs> but ask the question, okay? Why isn't anyone knocking on his door, though? It's got to be what everyone says. Wentz is probably in his hunting lodge, no phones. You know what it's got to be? He's uncomfortable to be around. It's got to be that. You know how there's certain people when you get into the room, you're like, everyone's having a good time. You're talking. All of a sudden, that one family or that outsider guy walks in. It's kind of like talking sports in Philly. It's just like, what does he know? Who's who's he? Who's he can? Who's he can? What's who is his people? <laughs> who's this guy? Silo? What 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 does what, what does he know? What what where has he ever been to the plateau? Does does he know anything? Yeah, you know, because <laughs> the cat is out of the bag. The league knows he's a weirdo. I think that, you know what? It's crazy and to the point as that is. 
He just doesn't fit anywhere. I think that's it. Then again, I thought Belichick never fit anywhere. He had to go back and learn how to be a coach and deal with players. How'd he do that? He went to the Jets when Parcells was there. He had to learn to be better with quarterbacks, which he hasn't proven yet. Talked about quarterbacks managing egos. Brady man, Dude, Brady coached Belichick when it came to the mentality part of that franchise. <laughs> Brady was the smarter one. You know why? He tolerated that shit. See, Wentz is the reverse. See, Wentz is the guy, I mean, it has to be. The reason that no one wanted to help him is because he's unapproachable. Looks to me when Jalen Hurts walks into a room, you 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 you're you're drawn. In. You know how those guys are. There's guys that do walks into a room or anybody with a great personality. It just blows the room up, and everyone it's like a magnet. And I, there's so many great people. Like when people walk into a room, you know a guy who has or a woman who has presence when they walk in to a room know that and so dude i don't know you can fix that you're a weirdo you're a weirdo jeff george couldn't fix it hertz could sell water to the ocean that's so cool i agree i think i think that's exactly right i think that's an innate skill that quarterbacks you can't coach you either are him or not that you know when you're a weirdo you're like jay cutler weird i don't know where he's coming from he's really a, like i think that i think that stops aaron Rodgers from being the success that he needs to be with those numbers that he's put up you can't put up those kind of numbers and still be what is he in the postseason 12 and 10 i don't know what is that but i think it's because you're weird i think russell wilson's weird Patrick Mahomes, I think he relates. Remember something, the Mecca, lots of great people in history have kind of weird, have been kind of weird, depends on how you use it. How about this then? How, how, how about this then? Weird to uncomfortable being around like that. Wentz with Tomlinson is something that could be special. Have you seen the Colts investigated for gambling? <laughs> I'm surprised they're not in, they're not being investigated for pill. Po no, let me stop. <laughs> uh, Dan, you see Wentz backing up cousins, man. I would, that would be, I don't know. Why in the world would you want to do anything like that? Wentz and cousins. Holy cow. First guy to this, first guy to the psychiatrist's bed. Well, you know, the, here, here's Kirk Cousins talking to a psychiatrist. You know, I don't know what it is, but every time I see 4:30 Eastern, you know, anything after 4:30, I turn into a pumpkin. I just can't get over it. I don't know why. I turn into a pumpkin after 4:30. Well, have you ever thought of thinking and setting your watch back? So I never thought of that. Hey, maybe I'll try that. And here's Carson Wentz on a psychiatrist's uh, couch. What's the problem, Carson? Nick Foles. They got a statue out front of the place, Philadelphia. Philly fans think I'm a sorry-ass loser. But I did everything for them. I, I took a hit from Jadavian Clowney, and they boo me. Okay. So you don't like your feelings hurt? <laughs> no, I don't like my feelings hurt. I'm a leader. Are you? Hey, those two guys on a psychiatrist. I mean, seriously, those two guys could make a psychiatrist a billionaire. I mean, I just don't know, man. I had, you know, I had Stefan Diggs. Now I got Justin Jefferson. And every time after 430, I turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Night games for cousins. <laughs> Hey, hey, Kevin, don't let it hit midnight, man. The carriage turns into a pumpkin. <laughs> and, the, and the glass slipper, man, <laughs> falls off. I got a feeling that's what's going to happen to Penny's 
Jones in New York. Dimes Jones, man. You give a guy $46 million. Good luck. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm sure that's going to work out well. Yeah. Cosmo Sills is all of us having a good time here with you. And there's Niners giving off weird vibes. Dude, well, Niner guy is a weird vibe. Okay? It's a weird vibe in the place. Got everything except what? The quarterback. You got quarterbacks airmailing it, or a quarterback airmailing it in a bag drill. Dude, I told you. Anytime you serve white wine spritzes or lemon seltzers at a football game, what, what do you want me to say? <laughs> A seltzer or white wine spritzer or a Malo. Dude, this is not a patio where I'm having drinks and food and appetizers. I want a beer and a dog. What do you mean you want a dog? We don't serve hot dogs in Santa Clara. <laughs> this is Napa country. Napa country? The hell's that? <laughs> Have you never been to Silverado? Silverado? It's like a psychiatrist's place. Isn't that like a crazy house? Isn't that like a crazy house? It's not a crazy house. Silverado is a white wine winery. <laughs> Why do you shake your head like that? I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm friends with Carson Wentz. <laughs> 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 Seriously, I, I had gone to the stick before, sat in the stands. The guy came over to me, man. He goes, gave me, offered me, Niner, I hate to do it to you, man. Guy offered me one of them little wiener dogs on a, like on a toothpick. I was like, what in God's name is this? And he goes, it's a wiener dog. Haven't you ever had a wiener dog? I'm like, on a toothpick? <laughs> I go, well, how many of those things do you think, <laughs> how many of those things do you think Big Sills could eat at one time? A <laughs> hundred? So they, they gave me a wiener dog on a toothpick. I said, well, you better give me 50 of them. <laughs> and the guy, hey, and, and, and the guy was looking at me, he goes, you're kidding, right? I'm like, no, I'm not kidding. You better give me about 50 of them. They're about this big. It's like, what are you talking about? Wiener dog. Do I look like a wiener dog? <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, guy. And the Super Bowl 60s there. Wiener dog or Brie? Uh, that's one Super Bowl I won't be going to. <laughs> I won't be fed well. <laughs> and Merlot. Chardonnay. Lemon. Seltzer. I don't want any of that. <laughs> uh, so here, in the end with Wentz, I don't know, man. I, I think it's got more to do with being uncomfortable around people. Isn't that the craziest thing on the planet? Wentz is not getting calls to be on a football team because people think he's weird. They think he's weird. So what do you think about Wentz in San Francisco? Oh, I'd love to see that. Wentz, Sam Darnold, and last chance Lance. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if, if I were the Eagle fans, I'd be doing a petition right now. Niner fans, you should sign Carson Wentz. <laughs> you see, the, four, the Eagle fans have – don't you agree, Tone? Eagle fans have two things going. They they have a um, they have all these guys that petition the NFL every year to make sure that Jerry Jones still owns the Cowboys. And now what they're going to do is they're going to get people that are going to make sure that Carson Wentz lands in San Francisco to undermine that thing too. Hell, you got Josh Harris now owning the Commanders. What more do you want? You have the whole division wrapped up pretty soon. <laughs> hey, you got hey pretty soon you're going to have the whole division wrapped up. <laughs> Ah. Hey, Josh Harris is the owner of the Commanders. I think Wednesday he's meeting with the finance people. If I'm an Eagle person, I'm like this. Well, that guy has completely effed up the Sixers. You really think he's going to turn around the Commanders? 
what we give you that idea? <laughs> I mean, hey, believe in the process. Hey, hey, Tone. This is Big Sills from like 20,000 feet looking at you going, hey, believe in the process. <laughs> What's the process? Tanking? Shit, there's been more tanking in, in Philadelphia <laughs> by Josh Harris than any owner in the history, and that includes Donald Sterling. Uh, hey, you got no chance. Yeah, that's it right there. No chance, Lance. You got a new one. You got a new one, right? Hey, you guys have been awesome. I really appreciate you guys coming aboard, man. Way to kick Monday off. Dude, we're so close, man. We're we're now like a month and a half out from the start of training camps. Man, I still think there's one more big move that Howie's going to make. I really do. God bless all you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. By the way, Tone, spectacular stuff as always. Man, I love working with Tone. He's so good. Um, Xander, thank you. Big Joe, thank you. 